Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the silicon lottery and how it affects Bitax miners and the chips underneath the Bitax. So right here you have a chip from a Bitax Max. This is actually the one that we fried maybe a couple of weeks ago on the voltage regulator that you see there. But if we turn it over, we've actually cleaned it up. So you should be able to see BM one three six six ag and that's just the chip number so these are typically from an s17 as it's the first iteration of the bit axe so as i said today we're going to be talking about the silicon lottery and how that actually takes place and why it matters for bit axe overclocking but before we get into that i'd like to thank the sponsor of this video crypto miner bros since 2018 cryptominerbros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch, and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing, and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So first, let's talk about what is the Silicon Lottery, and we'll take it over to the computer very soon. Let's just go through it. So it basically refers to, in the semiconductor manufacturing process, some graphics cards, this is mainly for graphics cards and CPUs, but also pertains to these chips. They can perform better than other ones, even if they are the same model. So no two chips are exactly the same in the manufacturing process. And that matters when it comes to overclocking on these BitAx devices. So some chips come out of the production line able to achieve higher clock speeds at lower voltages. For example, if we look at even our gammas that we have, some of them are more efficient even at the same overclocks as the other ones. So we've done a couple of tests that kind of basically show that some of them are better in terms of the silicon lottery than the others, and it's not really a thing you can select for. As you can see in there, there is a defect on this which is right there on the chip. Let's try to get a better look at it right there. But that doesn't actually affect it too much. It still hashes, even though there is a defect there. So that's not a way that you can tell. Some people might think that that's a way you can tell, but it's definitely not. You see people in the community talking about their bit acts not hashing. That is not the silicon lottery. It would be when a, for example, a gamma is supposed to do 1.2 terahash, but it only ends up doing 900 gigahash. And that's something to do with the chip underneath. So mainly it's to do with where you're actually getting your chips from. If they're coming from Bitmain, then you probably shouldn't have a problem. But I know that sourcing the chips is a little bit different and each manufacturer kind of sources the chips from different places, I believe. So how does this silicon lottery actually work? So you have a large silicon wafer, maybe let's say an A4 piece of paper. You can see how small this chip is. So imagine that spread out onto A4 paper and that contains multiple chips in it. So they basically pour out a layer of silicon and hopefully it sets perfectly. But because it doesn't set perfectly, you have two different chips, even though they're side by side. And once they're cut, which is the die cutting process, they would actually be two different chips. And then the manufacturers test the chips to see how well they perform. And if they meet a higher performance standard, they're often sold as premium models. That's mainly for GPUs and CPUs, but potentially it might be going on with these ASICs as well in the Bitmain process. So it doesn't really have a noticeable impact on kind of standard settings necessarily. It's when you really start to overclock that you'll see different settings. So when we overclock our gammas and they're different in terms of the hash rate, that's because they have different silicon chips underneath. So you might get lucky and you might get good silicon for your chips. The variation is not actually that big. It's probably around 5%, but you can have bigger variations depending on where 
the manufacturer actually gets the chips from. So for example, on a gamma, it's 1.2, but it might only hash at 1.1. So the variation isn't massive, but this video is more about education on silicon lottery and how it actually affects you overclocking your chip. So we'll head over to the computer now and we'll have a look at some examples of that. But just on here, I believe that the BitAxe Max can do around 500 giga hash, but we've actually got this up to around 800. So when you really start pushing the overclocks, a lower voltage is favorable to have a higher frequency. And you see it in GPU mining. A lot of people talk about the silicon lottery in GPU mining, where a GPU, even though it's the exact same GPU, might have a different clock speed and might be able to push a little more hash rate than the one that is exactly the same and is sitting right next to it. Typically, they don't really sell them as higher clock speed GPUs because the variation is not that much. But if you're into GPU mining, you might already know this. But mainly, if you get a good silicon lottery, that means that your chip overall should be more efficient at a higher overclock. So let's head over to the computer and talk about it a little bit more. So as I mentioned in kind of the explanation video right there, these normally happen to GPUs or CPUs, and this is kind of just a chart on the memory of a GPU that they all tested. So this is a OC 1070 Ti variant. So you can see that each chip is overclocked to a certain extent, and then you see that they have maybe a higher memory OC right here on some of them and lower for others. So this might be the average around here, but these are technically better chips underneath. And as I said, it goes through a process called binning, which is where they sort the chips into which one's the best ones and which ones require more voltage for a higher frequency. And what happens in that process is you can typically find GPUs that are pre-binned, which means that they are on the kind of upper end of the scale in terms of their performance. As I said, I don't know if pre-binning is a big thing in terms of the BitAx community. I don't really know how the manufacturers get the chips. I haven't really spoken to any of them, but I'm assuming that some of them are pre-binned and some of them are not, because there's definitely variations between BitAxes that you get from different suppliers. As we have BitAxes from different suppliers, we got one from AliExpress, which technically I would think that they would be using kind of binned ones on the lower end of the scale, but that's actually been performing pretty well. So I don't see anything wrong with it necessarily right now, but maybe in the future it will clock out. And then we have two other gammas which are from different manufacturers. So we can see the difference between them as well. They tend to be on the upper scale as well, I think in terms of them. So the AliExpress ones in the middle, I have an older one, which is at the bottom and a newer one, which is at the top. In terms of my scaling of where the chips came from, you can kind of see this here. We have the Bitaxe Gamma, which is running at 837, and then the AliExpress one, which is running at 1.12. And then you also have another one that we have here, which is running at 1.17. So they are all using the same overclocks. However, I do want to note they are using different heat sinks, so that might become some variability in terms of the actual watts pulled against the heatsink. So the Copperzilla, obviously the most efficient heatsink is going to perform a little bit better than the other ones that we have on there. But you can even see this in our AxOS. So our expected for the Bitax Supra that we have is around 625. These are slightly different overclocks. The efficiency isn't great but hash rate is around 592 at current time, and it jumps up to around 725. When we go over to kind of the specifications, the hash rate is supposed to go up to 625, and the max is supposed to be 775. Now, that's not necessarily the max in general. Because of heat sinks and stuff like that that you can overclock, there's not really a good way to tell if you have the silicon lottery. The only really... The only real way you could tell is if the manufacturer tells you where they got them from, if they are pre-binned or not. So that's kind of up to the manufacturer to go with. But even with this Supra, we've had it up to 870 giga hash before. So way past the max that's listed here. I'm sure a lot of people have also got up to that. 
But even then, as you start to overclock, you'll see a difference between one to the other. So we could do an experiment in the future where we buy a Bitax from the exact same supplier, and then we use the exact same heat sink and the exact same fans, and then we test them against each other in terms of the overclocking and what hash rate they actually end up at and what efficiency they end up at. There are a lot of variables that would come into place as well. So as I said, the only real way is to know if the manufacturer had them pre-binned because there are certain things like thermal paste that even from manufacturer to the same manufacturer, two of the chips could have a different amount of thermal paste. So that wouldn't really be a fair test. But all of these things come into play and it's very hard to tell if you have the silicon lottery on one of your chips. But this video is more to educate you and make you aware that it is a thing. But if you are having a chip that's underperforming by quite a lot, it's probably not the silicon lottery and it's probably defective in terms of the chip. If you're having one that you know should be doing a certain amount of hash rate, but it's just slightly under it, then that's probably the silicon lottery in play. And then it goes the other way. So if you have one that is slightly higher, then the silicon lottery is in your favor. So mainly this video was just to educate you guys about what the silicon lottery is. If you found it useful or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to reply if I know any answers to those questions. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.